If you think a low credit score is standing in your way of qualifying for a loan, is it actually? Because improving your credit can take some time, but there are some very clear, simple steps how to do it. And today we are going to be breaking those steps down one by one. I'm Hannah Escher. I'm a mortgage advisor and rookie investor with two properties. And I'm so excited to be speaking with you about this very important topic today. Now, before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's just do a brief overview of why having a good credit score even matters. Well, number one, it can help you get better terms for loans, and that is loans all across the board, whether that's a mortgage, a car loan, a student loan, anytime someone has to pull your credit, look at your credit history, analyze your credit score, the higher that score is, and the better your credit history is, usually the more favorable terms you're going to get on a loan. Simply put, those terms also include interest rates. So usually the higher your credit score and the better your credit history, the lower the interest rate you will get. Besides purchasing a home, getting a car, getting student loans, getting personal loans, a good credit score actually is important also most of the time when you're renting. And again, that's because people want to verify that you have a history of being able to pay things on time and being able to pay things back in the amount of time and at the terms that were agreed upon. So let's dive in, let's get started and find out how we can improve our credit score and help our credit score continue to go up over time and immediately. Step number one, make sure you're checking your credit history often. There are many ways you can do this. Usually your bank might have an option for credit monitoring. There's lots of third-party apps and platforms that you can use to monitor credit. And the government has made sure that you are able to get one free full credit report every single year. You can Google that official URL to go and order that free credit report, and they will have to send you a free report of everything that's showing up on your credit history. You can do that once a year. So it's a very helpful tool and it's something I definitely recommend. Now, if you're checking your credit history often using other platforms, you may not even need to use that annual tool, but make sure you're utilizing some type of credit monitoring service. And most of the time you can find these for free. So if you're looking at different options that can help you monitor your credit credit history. There's plenty of free ones. If something is asking you for a subscription, maybe research a little more and see what other options are available. This is another great opportunity also to work with your mortgage professional. Many times in my experience as a lender, we'll pull credit for clients and a lot of times clients won't even know that they had a derogatory mark on their credit history or that there's an outstanding balance that hasn't been paid. And so even if you think you're not ready for a pre-approval or a pre-qualification, talk to a mortgage advisor and this is a very very important piece of that qualifying metric. So it is more recommended to pull this credit report early, see what's showing up officially on their end so that when you're ready to actually move forward with the purchase of a home, you know what to expect on your credit report. Again, if you're not working with a lender yet, you can go to biggerpockets.com slash find a lender to find a trusted lender in your area. Step two, this is one of the most important steps in maintaining a good credit score, and that is pay your bills on time. I cannot stress this enough. Now, there's a lot of different beliefs around if you should be paying off balances all at once versus keeping balances on credit cards to help Credit companies want to give you more credit. At the end of the day, I say pay what you can to be able to pay everything on time. If that means you're only making minimum payments, then only make those minimum payments. Your credit score is going to be much better making minimum payments and paying everything on time than making large chunks of payments here and there and then letting things be 
delinquent. You do not want that to happen. That really brings your credit score down. A quick tip here. If you have not paid certain bills on time, if you have derogatory marks, you can always dispute those marks. And you can do this usually, again, through credit monitoring platforms, or you can go straight to the three credit bureaus and dispute those derogatory marks right on their website. You can even call them, but I found that doing this online is a little bit easier because you can also upload supporting documentation showing why you're even making an appeal. And I always recommend to people to dispute those derogatory marks. Even if it's something where you feel like, yeah, I couldn't make that payment on time, so I didn't. So, you know, it's not exactly an accident. Still appeal it. Let them know your situation. Let them know what was going on. There are still humans behind those credit bureaus. And if you can show that you have a really great payment history on other lines of credit that they're seeing reported on your credit report, maybe they're going to forgive you that derogatory mark. And it happens more often than you think it might. So always give it a try. One last tip on making those payments on time is to set up automatic payments. Many times, and I've seen this a lot in my job, when someone has a derogatory mark, it's not because they couldn't afford to make the payment. It's just because they forgot to make it or didn't even know that payment was late. So to be safe, I absolutely recommend setting up those automatic payments if you can. What I like to do specifically is to set up automatic payments for the minimum monthly payment to make sure that that minimum at least is being paid. And then if you want to add more on top of that, you can. But at that point, then the minimum is being paid and you are making sure that your payments are being paid on time. Step number three, keep your credit card balances below a 30% debt utilization. Now, this requires sometimes that you do some math or you might be using a credit monitoring platform that does the math for you. But this is a very important piece of keeping that credit score high or increasing that credit score. When we're thinking about debt utilization, you want to be thinking about risk factor. Credit many times has to do with how risky a lender is determining you as a borrower might be to lend money to. So in that case, the more that your credit is utilized, it means the less that you have left to utilize. And in a creditor's mind, that means maybe this person is not going to be able to make their payments. Maybe they are living above their means. So when you're looking at debt utilization, you want to be thinking about what's going to be making my profile look the most attractive. And thankfully, there's an exact piece of math that we can look at and that creditors look at to determine what that credit score and good credit history looks like. So when you're looking at reducing those balances on your credit cards, look to bring each of those credit cards down to a 30% utilization ratio or below. This is where a strategic balance transfer can come in and can be a really good idea to one, increase the line of credit you have available and maybe move over some higher interest debt into a promotional low interest debt on a new credit card. You'll see these balance transfer offers everywhere. So it's very important that you're only doing this if you really think it's going to help what's going on with your debt utilization. I've used this strategy in the past to increase my credit line, move high interest debt over to lower interest debt, and then make sure I'm paying off that debt that has that low interest rate on it before it spikes up to a higher interest rate. So that's something you can look into as well if you're looking to increase your line of credit available and help lower that debt utilization ratio pretty immediately. Step number four, remember that the length of credit history matters. So if you have that first credit card that you opened 10, 15, 20 years ago, maybe it has a $500 line of credit and you're like, I never use that card anymore. 
do not close that account. The reason being, that is helping to extend the length and history of your credit. The longer your credit history is, the more favorably that looks on your credit report and it is reflected in your credit score. Just keep those lines open. Even if you get some gas on it every once in a while, make sure you use those cards for something in order to keep that length of credit as long as possible. Another way to increase the length of credit history and also help yourself build credit is by being added to someone else's credit card as an authorized user. This is a great idea, especially if you don't have a long credit history yourself, or maybe you're trying to increase that line of credit on your overall debt utilization ratio. It's a fabulous idea if you can find someone, usually a parent or maybe a spouse, that has a credit card that they've had open for a really long time. They have an amazing payment history on it. Maybe they have a very large line of credit available. What that does for you, it now allows that credit line to be reported on your credit report. So it's going to extend your length of years and credit. Hopefully it will also show a really fantastic payment history and hopefully it's going to increase the line of credit you have available, therefore lowering your debt utilization ratio. Now you want to be careful with this strategy because you do want to make sure that you're asking to be added to someone's credit card that really does have a good payment history and that has a long length in time of being open. If either of those things aren't there, it may not be worth it to be added as an authorized user. The biggest pluses of being added as an authorized user really are length of years for your credit history and good payment history. If those things are not what's going to be added to your report, then maybe look at a different strategy. Now on to our last step, step number five, is having a good mix of types of credit that show up on your credit report. That means mortgage, car payments, maybe student loans, maybe credit cards. Having that good mix of types of credit and showing a good payment history tells creditors that you know how to handle multiple types of credit and that you can make these payments on time, and even pay back loans within the terms agreed upon. If you have loans that have been paid off on your credit report plus new loans showing up, that looks great too. And again, that shows that you've had a good credit history and that you are trusted when it comes to lending credit to. Specifically, if you do have a mortgage on your credit history, that can really boost your credit. So if you're just starting out and you don't have that yet, use these other tips to get to that point where now you're going to be able to qualify for a mortgage. You'll have that mortgage on your credit report, make those payments on time, and that is going to really help boost that credit score and make you look more attractive when you're going to get another mortgage. Now, before we wrap up today, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about my personal experience building my credit because I didn't know a lot about credit when I first started getting interested in personal finance and finances, which then eventually led me into the position I have as a mortgage advisor. When I first was looking at opening credit cards, I literally was looking at the deals I could get with opening those cards. I'm sure you've all seen these at department stores you go, they're offering their credit card and saying, you can get 10% off, get 15% off, maybe it's even more. And that's how they will entice you to open that credit card. Now, first of all, that's not a bad thing to open a credit card with a department store. You just have to be careful of how many you open and how often you open those cards. And as a very young person myself, I actually didn't know that right away. I had to go and learn that I shouldn't be opening credit cards all the time, even if I get approved for them. So my first probably six to 10 credit cards were department stores. And yes, I got these fabulous deals, 
once, usually, maybe twice. But what it did do, it did help me build my credit and it helped me be more aware of the types of cards I should be looking for. So when you're looking at credit cards, I suggest you do a lot of research to ensure that they're really going to be providing a benefit to you and that you're going to be able to utilize that card for a long time because you don't want to be closing credit cards all the time. That can also affect your credit. Be mindful of what cards to open. Be mindful of what loans to get. There you have it. Five simple ways to build and improve credit. I hope this video was helpful and that it will help you on your credit building journey. I'm Hannah Escher. You can search my name on Bigger Pockets. And if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe to the Bigger Pockets Rookie channel for more videos just like this.